Good morning, class. Happy Monday. We're in our small read today. It's on page 160. 160. We are starting Unit 3. The Spirit. That's the Spirit. This is a poem from My Country, Tis of Thee. I would sing it to you, but I'm not that hot of a singer. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. Samuel Francis Smith wrote that. The big idea for these next five chapters in this unit three is, how can you show community spirit? And you can see these people here, they're putting together, a whole bunch of people together are putting together a house. We have an organization here in Milwaukee called Habitat for Humanity. And they get together volunteers and they build houses. And, and then they give them to people at a very affordable rate. This first chapter, uh, this week... This week's chapter, our essential question, how can you make new friends feel welcome? Make sure I was going back to school the first week of school, and there's five new kids in our class. How could you make those kids feel welcome at Garden Homes Lutheran School? You see in our picture there, uh, they got a little tree house there, and obviously there's a new kid new to the neighborhood, and they're making new friendships. It says moving to a new place can be intimidating, there are challenges going to a new school, making new friends, and learning your way around a new neighborhood. When people are welcoming and they greet you, all these challenges become just a little bit easier. What are some things you can do to help people to feel welcome? Well, you could sit by them at lunch, or you could show them where their locker is. You could teach them where the bathroom is uh, to help them feel safe and secure at school. What would help you most on your first day of school of a new, at a new school? I think the most thing that would be important to me is that somebody would just come and say hi to me and, and just say, welcome to Garden Homes. Well, you can think about that some more. Here comes our vocabulary words for today. It says, use the pictures and the sentences to talk about each one with a partner. I'll talk you through with the, with the video. Now, guys, we're going to work hard on these. Uh, today because some of them are a little bit longer and a little more difficult. Acquaintance. Joe talked to his new acquaintance, Tony, in order to get to know him better. A friend is someone you've known for a long time, you have a lot in common with. An acquaintance is somebody you just bumped into. So, for example, I'm going to college and I had a group of guys that I always hung out with. But in some classes I had this one guy and I knew him, but he was older than I was. He was coming back to college for his second career, and I knew him, but we didn't hang out, so we were not like really close friends. We were just acquaintances, so acquaintances is just a little bit less than a friend. Cautiously. Now, that's an owl if you see what he's trying to pet there. Uh, sometimes we have these birds of prey uh, opportunities at uh, the zoo, and you can see these birds that would Fly around and look for other things to eat or hunt. Well, air gently and cautiously touch the owl's feathers. Cautious. You didn't want to scare something, so you're very cautious around a new um, area or new activity. You might be a little bit cautious around a construction zone. You might be cautious around road work. You might be cautious. Complimentary. Complimentary means you need like one, you can't have one thing without the other. It completes something. Peanut butter and jelly taste good because they are complimentary foods. It's kind of like noodles and spaghetti sauce. You want to have spaghetti without both things. Complimentary. Um, what foods do you think are complimentary? I think peanut butter and chocolate are complimentary. Reese's peanut butter cups are my favorite. I like to have vanilla ice cream with chocolate and peanut butter on top. Jumbo. A jumble of masks and snorkels lay tangled together at the bottom of the boat. It would be really super awesome if you didn't have a jumble mess in your room. But 
If you're anything like my kids, you might have a jumbled mess at the bottom of your Some clothes and some toys, some books from school. Never let your assignments turn into a jumbled mess. Logical. On a multiple choice test, the girl tried to figure out the most logical answer. That's the one that makes sense. Logical means to make sense. And so she's thinking A is not right and C is not right. It's got to be B or D. Hmm, which one makes the most sense? I don't really like this word because it has a negative connotation. Soon we're going to learn about connotation and denotation. But the connotation of scornfully is um, a mean way. The mother spork spoke scornfully to her son about his bad study habits. Hey, son, you need to get your act together. You need to study better. That would be scornfully. Okay, and fully, that's one of those suffixes that we've been working on. So that would indicate that that's an adverb. A lot of words that end with L-Y are adverbs describing how she talked to him, scornfully. Scrounging is kind of funny. Here's a cat in a garbage can, and the, the Tina saw the cat scrounging through the overflowing trash can. Scrounging is like when you're hungry for something and you're just looking around, what's there to eat? What's there? I go to the, the, the pantry at our house where my wife keeps some food and sometimes my kids have Halloween candy in there. I'm looking for some. No, not in there. So then I'm looking in the fridge, anything good to eat in here? Uh, no. Then I look in the freezer and, oh, yeah, I found that ice cream. I was scrounging, looking around. A lot of animals do that. In particular, we're going to have a mouse in our main story this week that's scrounging. And the last one, trustworthy. When you're mountain climbing, it is a good to have a trustworthy partner to help you up the cliff. Okay, well, don't try this at home. Hopefully, they're only about 10 feet off the ground there. I hope that's not a real mountain because that looks pretty dangerous. But, of course, they got safety harnesses on, and there's a trustworthy. You can trust them. They're not going to let anything bad happen to you. We're going to keep right on going all in one video today. Our genre this week is a fantasy. A fantasy is a, a made-up story, and it's at the library. How can you make new friends feel welcome? Now, this is going to be crazy because you kind of look at these kids, these little kids, and they look like they're tiny little, uh, tiny little people, and that's what's the fantasy part of the story. Is they're going to have some make-believe characters in a fantasy at the library. Rick Dobson <laughs> admired the pink and orange sky as he waved goodbye to Miss Rio and locked the library door. At, as the sun began to descend, that means go down, behind the Blue Ridge Mountains, Rick started walking to his office to collect his jacket. Seeing a jumble of books on a reading table, he sighed and began to gather them into neat piles. No, he stated firmly and returned the books to the table. Not tonight. So obviously he's the librarian. The librarian never left any books out, but today was his birthday, which meant a brisk walk to the Cupcake Cafe for a birthday treat before it closed at 5.30 p.m. That evening, as he sat at home in his book-filled living room, Rick thought about the old friends who had called to wish him happy birthday. If only this job had not required him to move halfway across the country. After six months here, he had made mere he had made more than one new acquaintance, but no real friends. So here it is. He's the most of people, but it's not like they hang out. Books are my friends, he thought, which reminded him of the books sitting on the table at the library. I might as well go back tonight and shelf them, he decided. He entered the library and flicked on the lights. Immediately, he noticed a book, Small World, face down on the floor. What's going on, he muttered as he bent down and cautiously lifted the book. Ah, he yelled, and he dropped the book. Four miniature figures scampled out of the way as the book landed on the floor with a thud. Mr. Dobson exclaimed in a breathless voice, We are enchanted to make your acquaintance. Enchanted means pretty excited. Who? What? Rick stammered. We're the Bookers. Now that's their names. That's kind of a cool last name, Bookers. I'm William. This is Emily. This is Emily and our children, Harry 
and Clementine. By the way, happy birthday. You know it's my birthday? So this is our Dobson talking. Naturally, we read your flyer when you arrived six months ago. It's only logical that we would want to learn about the new librarian. You were scrounging through my files? Rick said, collapsing into the nearby chair. He rubbed his eyes, but the tiny figures were still there, looking up at him expectantly. Suddenly, the nimble boogers began shimming up the table. We're absolutely trustworthy, Emily assured him. Haven't you ever heard of bookers? William asked. Every library has bookers. We ensure everything runs smoothly, said Emily. Seen any mice around? They love to gnaw on everything. Rick slowly shook his head. I do a nightly rodent patrol, Henry stated proudly. Those mice run at the sight of me, he said scornfully. <laughs> and here is Henry, this kid is driving his little car. He's chasing the mice out of the library. Obviously fantasy. Do you do your chairs ever squeak? inquired Clementine. No, that's because we oil them. Rick considered the past six months. He hadn't seen one mouse. His chairs never squeaked, and his pencils were never dull. The pencils, he asked? We sharpen them nightly, William replied. But why? asked Rick. Look around, exclaimed William. We work and we work and read. Bookers and librarians are complimentary. There it is, complimentary. You can't have one with the other, kind of like peanut butter and jelly. We belong together. To be honest, Mr. Dobson, said Emily, we wanted to meet you because we thought that we could be friends. Rick Dobson grinned. Call me Rick. And I'd love to be friends, he said. Rick eventually made other new friends, but he still spent many evenings with the bookers. He brought a he bought a toy car for Henry's Rolling Patrol, and he read scary stories alone to Clementine. Every year on his birthday he brought cupcakes and his cupcakes for his friends to share with him. So here you are, you got the mom and the mom and the dad and the two kids, their little itsy bitsy cupcakes, and here it is his birthday. He's got a little one candle on his birthday. Pretty interesting. So you got a man who's got a new job in a new city who's away from his friends and his family, and he meets some, well, fantasy characters here, becomes their friends. What a cool story. All right, here's your assignment. I'd keep my book handy because you might need it. It's our normal Monday assignment. Let's start with our name on top. It says, use the words from the box to answer each question. Then use the word in a sentence. Here are the words. Acquaintance, complimentary, logical, scrounging, cautiously, jumble, scornfully, trustworthy. Now I'm going to let you make your own sentences, but I'm going to help you with some of these. Let's write the lines in front. Number one. What were the mice doing when they were looking on the ground for food? Well, the little bookers in our story were looking through his folder in our, in our lesson here. It wasn't a mouse, it was a cat, right? So the cat looking for food in a trash can. The first one is scrounging. It's not a word that I use very often. Which word could you use to describe a mess? Which one did we say was a big, huge mess? I go back to the pictures. I think it was the goggles. Yeah, a jumble of mass and snorkels lay tangled together in the bottom of the boat. Jumble. What a mess. A jumble mess. Number three. What do you call a person who you know? So this isn't my best friend, but it's somebody. I know, I think it was the kids in the treehouse. I always think of the pictures. Oh, uh, no, that was the first page, the treehouse. Huh, not Jumbo, the complimentary card. Maybe these two guys, right? Joe talked to his new acquaintance. Acquaintance. So guys, I'm always using the book. That was work best for me because I'm a visual learner. If you are a visual learner, use that book and those pictures as well to help you. How was the judge acting when she told the policeman he had broken the law? You broke the law! 
I think I know what that one is, but I am going to be careful on that one. I'm going to go to the next one. What is another word for carefully? I think I had that one in here. Carefully, carefully. On a multiple choice test, the girl tried to figure out the most logical answer. No. When you are on mountain climbing, it's good to have a trustworthy partner to help you. Hmm. I don't know about that one. Eric gently and carefully touch it. I think cautiously. Cautiously. That's number five. We skip four. Be careful. Be cautious. Number six. How would you describe someone that you can rely on? That's the mountain climber. That one was trustworthy. Which is the word that describes someone who is very sensible? That's the girl taking the test. That one should be logical. And then the, number eight, what is another word for making whole? Chocolate and peanut butter. Makes a whole Reese's peanut butter cup. That one would be complimentary. Which would leave me scornfully for number four. Oops, complimentary for eight, scornfully for four. Okay, so go back and finish those three, and now your assignment is to make a sentence for each one. What were the mice doing? Please don't make mine. Mr. Bauer was scrounging for ice cream in his freezer. Make something about yourself, okay? You could talk about your jumbo mess in your room, maybe an acquaintance you met uh, one time. You could talk about your parents talking scornfully about not getting your homework done. The teacher might talk to you scornfully about not watching all the videos. All right, guys, continue to work hard on your reading. We'll see you tomorrow.